Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models and Memories Weekly, episode 32. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. And stay tuned all the way till the end to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week and I end every episode with a story. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How? Could you have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I finished some models. It feels like it's been so long since I finished models because I've been doing a lot of bigger models, but I finished a squad of Sisters Repentia. This is for a kill team, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna, this is gonna become a whole army. I super duper love how they turned out. It was definitely a laborious paint process because I really tried to go all out and make them perfect. And I think I succeeded, but uh, I my dream would have been to do something a little bit more like painterly and in in what I ended up doing was just doing it correctly. I highlighted everything. I I painted everything like a color, whereas uh, like I've seen other people be able to paint where they can kind of bring in light and shadow and uh, but maybe I'll try again. Maybe I'll try again now that I have some experience painting these models. But the thing that got me really excited was this sister, the leader. She painted up really, really quick and I really like how it looks. I used a purple wash on her cape, I used a white wash on the rest of her, and it turned out really, really good and easily. This was not a super, super long paint job, and I think I could totally paint up a lot of Sisters of Battle to this quality really quickly. So I think that might have to happen. I might need to get some of my favorite minis, because I love the Sisters of Battle, like the Paragon War Suits, which I absolutely love. I love those models. I know they're a little bit, every time, Games Workshop makes a mech suit. People are like, eh, but I like them. I just like the robot mech suits. I love it. But yeah, my army's definitely gonna have to feature quite a few of those. But on these sisters, I tried out a whole bunch of stuff. On their bases, I tried out some Green Stuff World texture rollers. These are acrylic rods that have uh, laser etched textures into them, and they're really cool. Um, I, I had some pretty good success with them. I would take a blob of Milliput, squish it down onto the base, and then roll this on top. Um, the only thing I had trouble with is I was using water to keep the milliput from sticking to this, and it didn't perfectly keep the milliput from sticking to this, so I think I might try cornstarch when I give this another try, but it worked out really well. Uh, a nice, easy way to get some really, really cool texture. The one I used is, was called Temple, and I used some Secret Weapon Scenix Crushed Glass, and this stuff worked out really, really nice. Uh, I think Secret Weapons is in the process of going out of business right now, but I have some of their crushed glass and it's really good. You mix it with um, gloss medium and then it becomes really wet looking snow. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I actually used a combination of Army Painter's Snow, which is like poly polystyrene or, poly, uh, yeah, it's polystyrene um, beads, which looks pretty good because it's bright, bright, bright white, whereas this is very transparent. And so I did Army Painter first and then I did a coat of this stuff. And I think it gave me pretty good snow the tricky thing with scale snow is that the, the 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 polystyrene snow doesn't look like snow. It looks like the stuff that floats in snow globes because it's what it is. And then this stuff doesn't look like snow because it looks like real snow, like snow that'd be like in your hand, which is not how snow looks when you're looking at a miniature. Because if you're looking at a miniature, it's kind of like you're looking at a person from like a hundred yards away. So it's it's tricky recreating what you see naturally in an artificial environment. But I think I think that these worked out really well. Uh, I've, I've slowly taught myself to experiment. Anytime I have an idea or I think of something, I just do it. Uh, and then uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it keeps me moving forward in my hobby career. And speaking of hobbies related stuff, Games Workshop showed off some new hobby products. And as we all know, Games Workshop has some of the best and most affordable supplies in the hobby verse. I think we can all agree on that. And so they came out with their Citadel paint handle extra large. And <laughs> there's so much wrong with it. You know what? Let me, let me. I have their old handle. I got it in a, uh, a lot of junk of uh, hobby junk. I bought off of a guy from Craigslist and I don't mind this. I think it's okay. Um, I like that the handle's nice and fat. Um, the jaws are pretty good. It can hold minis well. 
Um, I like my little cubes of wood with a little piece of tape, but I could totally see this being good, a good alternative. Especially, um, I, use, I have my tables up high so that I can paint with my arms level so that the model is very close to my face, and that's how I like to paint. But most people are using a, a standard table, and so this is totally, totally a very usable thing. It's very nice. Um, I don't understand the new design where they took the bulb and they made it this weeny little thing, I guess, so that you can get more of your hand around it and maybe you can hold it a little tighter. But I always found that uh, I would hold my hand over the chuck. Like, I, I don't want to be holding it down here because I want my hands as close as I can get them together so that they can brace. So I do not understand this new product. And the head on this thing is laughably huge. I mean, they show off a picture of a Scorpec Destroyer, which is kind of a big model. And the wings of this thing are longer than the model is tall. It's redonkulous. How are you going to get your, your fingy meat over that? It is completely ludicrous. And they also show the, the giant, the mega gargant giant thing. And it's like this tall. Who's gonna, who's holding it like this? And I'm painting it like this. It's absolute madness. This product is hilariously bad. Uh, I, I don't mind the old handle. It's not, it's not what I use, but I get it. It's, it's nice. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. I think if I paint at the local Warhammer store, I might use this just because uh, their tables are, are low, like, yeah, like normal. But, uh, yeah, this, I don't mind the old one. I guess I don't really mind the small one. The big one is hilariously bad. And speaking of hilariously bad, <laughs> the Citadel Color Assembly Stand. Uh, if you've ever done any electronics work or, and, or looked at any sort of like nerd shops, you'll not recognize these as helping hands. They're two little claws on attached to ball jointed arms. Horrible, terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Um, Number one, if you're if you're having trouble holding something while it's being glued, the best way I've found is you take you take some poster tack, you just take a big wad of poster tack. Sometimes silly putty will work too, and you just you know you get you get the sword right where you want it to be, and then you just stick it into the stick it into the poster tack putty, and it'll hold it while you know for the two minutes it'll take for the plastic glue to dry. This is ridiculousness. They show they show off. A, it holding like a gargant's arms together, I guarantee that whole sucker is just gonna start sliding even with these little arms. And I don't know what wonder plastic material they think they made this out of, I guarantee it will mar the hard polystyrene plastic. It's not that hard. It's very soft. I mean, your fingernail will easily gouge it. I do not see, this is, a this is way worse than the paint holder. Like people like the paint holders. This is awful. <laughs> No one should use this. Like, what is even the idea? Is like, you're like, oh, this, this, this whip. I don't want to hold it here for two minutes while the, the, the thing dries. I want to go keep my hot pocket. So I'm going to take my little clampy clamps and clip it here and then clip it here and then carefully put it down and then double check that it's right where I want it. And then I'm going to go and make my hot pocket. Like, th this is the worst ever. <laughs> Citadel color assembly stand. It's not very good. Um, I've never really seen people use helping hands with models. It's just not really what it's for. I've used helping hands before to like hold LEDs together while I solder them. Cause that's, I mean, that's what you need. You just need more hands when you're doing stuff like that. And uh, you don't need to be too gentle cause it's all metal. But uh, yeah, this is just not a good idea. <laughs> and last, <laughs> the, and the hits keep coming. The Citadel Color Sub Assembly Holder. This thing is also pretty bad. Um, I guess it's it's a middle it's a middle step in between if you want to paint like just a head or a gun of a mini and use your Citadel holder downer, but uh, it's 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 one attachment that fits in here and then it it comes down to a smaller point and then you have these thingies these little points and you're meant to like clip the point, put a little bit of plastic glue down and then glue on heads so that you can get in a lot closer with the head. I mean, I suppose it works, but eh, I, I mean, maybe if it's like free, you get 44 parts. So yeah, I guess you get 40. Yeah, you get 44 of these little holder downers, but you kind of use them up as you glue things to them. Uh, my go-to if I really want to have a nice sub assembly is I have my little cube of wood 
and I have a paper clip stuck in there and then I just drill a hole in whatever I want and then I stick it on the paper clip. That's, that's what I do all the time, works great, no big deal. I don't, I just don't get this. I mean, I, somebody who's good enough to work in sub assemblies and really try to get in, to get really in there on their weapons and on their heads and their sub assembly pieces, they're probably not, they have probably already have solutions that are not this. Yeah, they're probably not waiting for Games Workshop to come out with a product that you have to still clip and glue things to to get them to hold it for you. I just, I just don't get it. I don't think it's very good. You could also just use poster putty or double stick tape and just take your head and just stick it right down to the side of your, of your holder and that would work great too. I mean, I just don't get this at all. It's the Citadel Color Sub-Assembly Holder. Eh, don't buy this. <laughs> And then next, the Citadel Color Spray Stick. Now this is actually all right. Uh, they actually, they've had this before and it looks like this is just like another new version of it. It has a pistol grip. It has a rotating arm so that you can hold it and spray paint stuff. And this, this I actually like because it's just a whole bunch of rubber bands. It can hold any size mini because of the rubber band. And I could have used this yesterday actually when I was airbrushing varnish on all of these ladies. I was just holding them and varnishing them and so I was not getting varnish on two spots so then I had to let them dry come come the other way and then fix those spots this could have been nice to just throw throw them in there give them it'll hold them all nice and steady while I varnish them um, this is actually nice not that hard to reverse engineer this I mean you get yourself a couple of nails some rubber bands and a 2x4 it's the same exact product so uh, whatever games are shop charges for this which I'm sure will be very reasonable and competitive uh, I don't think it would be that difficult, you know, but there's potentially STLs of this already exist. But yeah, rubber bands, nails, and some sort of a board would uh, totally do this. But this is actually, this is actually a kind of a product I like. It, it looks like a really quick, easy way to hold a lot of minis. I know I've been thinking of taking my little cubes of wood and drilling holes in the bottom and then putting magnets so that I can attach them all to like a baking tray. And that would just make priming just ever so slightly faster than just holding every single one up one by one. So this is actually not a terrible idea. This is something that people would actually use. But yeah, that <laughs> that was all of the new products from Games Workshop. Uh... <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. I mean, I know they gotta try, they gotta try, but I think almost all of these were misses except for the, uh, the Citadel Color Spray Stick. And I suppose I don't mind the original uh, handle. I, I, I haven't I haven't tried out the new handle. That's a little weenier, but uh, I don't mind I don't mind this. I know recently this week they showed off Astartes and that Astartes was going to be coming to Warhammer TV, and I my mind started racing with the possibilities. I didn't realize that it hadn't taken off of uh, Warhammer Community, but it had. It still has the drop down menu because I don't know why, who their internet team is, but they can't ever seem to do anything. But uh, it's still there under the drop down menu, but it's not available to play. And so it came to Warhammer TV and my mind started to race because for some reason I didn't have tons of faith in Games Workshop. And so I thought one of two things would happen. I would I thought either it was going to it was going to drop on Warhammer TV for the Warhammer TV subscribers. And that was going to be the only place you could watch it or they were gonna drop the first like two minutes of the show and we were going to get, you know, a month and a half of Astartes and that's how they were going to get us content was just showing us tiny little snippets of the show we've already seen. I thought that might be what they would do. It doesn't sound impossible, but, but they did prove me wrong. They made it the, the entire show available for available on Warhammer TV and it's available without a subscription. So you don't have to be a Warhammer TV subscriber to watch Astartes on Warhammer TV. Good job, Games Workshop. Weirdly, I still think it's bananas that they didn't put it on their own YouTube channel because they have the number one most subscribed YouTube Warhammer channel in the world. And yet they didn't think that that was good enough to host War uh, Astartes. They had to put it for free on Warhammer TV. Still completely bizarre, but who knows, maybe in like a year or two, there'll be enough content on Warhammer TV that casual people might actually want to hop over there and watch some for free stuff. Although really the only thing worthwhile for free right now is uh, Astartes, because you can see 
clip shows of uh, Angels of Death, which is really good. It's a really good show, and it's too bad that no one gets to see it. And uh, they have a clip shows of um, Hammer and Bolter, which is also really good, and it's too bad people don't get to see it. But whatever. Games Workshop, a, a, a tiny little light in the big dark tunnel of weird decisions, but uh, at least at least that's uh, that's a, a positive. Yeah, people can watch Astartes for free somewhere. Should have been their YouTube channel, but but what are you gonna do? It's Games Workshop. But that was my Wargaming week. I am very excited to start work on battle reports. Not really start, I mean, we've been doing stuff, but it's really starting to become reality that we're gonna be doing battle reports, which is crazy to think about. It's hard, but if you guys are excited for battle reports and you guys like the content we do in general here, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you're gonna get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, terrain, STLs, and more. But with that said, it's now time to talk. It's now time for story time. This is a show called Models Memories Weekly, and that is because of how memories become attached to models and they all just mingle together. And every time I'm touching models, I'm thinking about what I was doing when I was originally working on those models. And this week, I want to talk about this. It's actually not too dusty. This is my spooky Halloween diorama that I worked out about this time last year. And I really, really like how it turned out. This was, uh, we were we had just started kind of making real videos or vid yeah, videos that are like 15 minutes or, or longer where I really deep dive on how to make something and how to build something. And uh, this was quite a project. This was featured in the videos you can design and build dioramas following these steps and speed painting a diorama using color reference, xenothal cheat, glazing, and more. Great, great titles. Nobody watched these videos. It was really a bummer. We worked really, really hard on it. I wore a costume. It was amazing. Um, they're really good videos. I think everybody should check them out. But uh, this thing turned out really, really cool. And uh, it really, it really kind of helped open the door with how to do things and how to film things and uh, what kind of things were available to do. Because for sure, this took a long time to build and paint and make. And it would have been a real bummer to do all this work for like a two minute tutorial or a five minute tutorial even. But uh, getting to really show off how to do things and, uh, and describing the process in great detail was actually really, really fun. It really brought me back to my architecture days where I, I had to, to do lots and lots of problem solving and come up with every possible solution. And so I got to show off a lot of those skills that I developed in this model. And it turned out great. One thing I love about this diorama is it's small. I think so many people go way too big with their dioramas. Who has the room? And who has enough stuff to populate a diorama like that? I think this is perfect because I got a little treat. It's nice and populated with pumpkins, and then you got pumpkin head right there in the middle. Super, super cute. Did I ever glue him down? I did not. Yeah, he's not even glued, he's just pinned. But he's so cute. I think I called him Jack. I think actually the, he's named Jack on the Reaper website. This is all, these are all Reaper miniatures. But I absolutely love how this turned out. I got to use another Green Stuff World product. Speaking of Green Stuff World, I used their Leaf Hole Punch, which I literally, I have to put it away because otherwise I'll just clip leaves out of everything near me. It's wonderful. But uh, the leaves have actually held up really, really well. I think they were a little yellowier a year ago and now they're orange, but they didn't turn like brown or black, which is I'm, I'm very happy with. I think this is great. I super duper love this. I think everybody should check out the videos where I made this thing because it was actually a really, really cool process. I showed how I 3D designed it in Photoshop and then I showed how I like drew it out on a piece of paper and every step of the process of cutting out the base, gluing together, making the ground, doing all of the textures, making these corn stalks. It was, it was quite a process building this thing and it's all documented. But uh, I really, I really, really appreciate, I really, really appreciate this build. It really looks nice on the shelf. I might have to do another diorama or two. I like that it's little, I think, I think if it were bigger than this, it would feel empty and it would feel like, why, why did I go bigger? Because my subjects are so small. I mean, little pumpkins and little pumpkin man. Ah, I remember I wore a spooky costume. We had props. It was great. 
I remember. And I remember I finished it with the pumpkin head poem. If anybody remembers the great, wonderful film Pumpkin Head, there's a poem. And it goes, keep away from pumpkin head unless you're tired of living. His enemies are mostly dead. He's cruel and unforgiving. Laugh at him and you're undone, but in some dreadful fashion. For violence he considers fun, he plans it with a passion. Time will not erase her blot, a plot in which he's brewing. And just when you think he's forgot, he'll conjure your undoing. Bolted doors and windows barred and guard dogs prowling in your yard won't protect you in your bed. Nothing will from pumpkin head. I remember all of it. Oh, that's great. But yeah, super, super love this diorama. I remember literally... I built this thing in costume and makeup because <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. And so I just wore everything for every moment of it so that we could get shots that we needed to of me talking. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm painting in full like uh, Munster costume. It was great. What a what a spooktacular endeavor. But uh, it turns out people don't want seasonal content. Nobody watches it. We did Halloween. We did Christmas, no views, so never again. <laughs> but it was kind of fun. And I got this really cool diorama out of it. And that will bring this episode of Models Memories Weekly to a close. And now it's time for the real start of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Stormcast Eternal by Visk, some Kill Team or Commandos by Flimbo the Dude, a Space Marine Sergeant by The Fluffy One, a Squat Squad by Emil33, an Orc Knob by Arm Smash, some Chameleon Skinks by Or Crypt Jim, a Fallout Vault Dweller by Alice Dare74, some Heavy Intercessors by Dancing of Doom, a Primary Space Marine by Player Sionen, a Scorpec Destroyer Lord by Boner Jams 3 some Skitari Vanguard by Ocho, a Chaos Space Marine by Aldus, a Marnius Calgar by C Maniac, a Gandalf the Grey by Go Boy3133, a Coruscant Guard clone by Prussian Blue, a Pirate by Burke, some Tau Drones by Seta Dragon, a Captain Typhus by Happy Pirate, some Assault Intercessors by Flamer31, a Space Marine Statue by Loyalist Frog, a Great Unclean One by The Happy Heretic, an Orc with Shuda by Falling Bravely, an Orc Beast Snag Up by Jimicolotl, a Necron Hexmark Destroyer by Loki42, some Orc Terrain by Barry, some Space Wolves by Bulldog Legion, a Vampire by Stinky Pete, and a Rogue Trader Chaplain by Birdie Owen Art. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.